Hello, I am Aviva Lee, reporting live in Jerusalem from room 552 for Israel 246 TV. Today is the 17th of September 2008. Welcome to this edition of More Than Commentary. The forensics team in Israel on Sunday released some of the information concerning the findings of the autopsy of little innocent Rose Pisum. I love the sovereign state of Israel, but my love for this tiny nation state in no way blinds me to the use of the media by those who would like to pave the way for a change in public opinion. Usually we see this phenomena as it relates to politicians who are calling in favors or teams of professionals preparing the public for increased inflation or loss of wages. However, after reading the two articles about Rose in the Jerusalem Post from Sunday, the 14th of September, I am left to wonder if perhaps the English language media is being used in this case of international interest by certain Israeli offices to prepare the public, the international public, for a charge less than murder in the indictments of Roni Roan and Marie Charlotte Pisum in the death of four-year-young Rose Pisum. You see, in the initial coverage of the multiple confessions of Roni Roan, as those confessions were reported in some of the Israeli press here, the man certainly confessed to violence against Rose Pisum. However, even the attorney for Roni Roan, if what the Jerusalem Post reported in the past weeks was correct, told the media that during the two initial interrogations of Roni Roan that he was frightened by the investigators and gave horrific stories concerning the murder of Rose Pisum. Yes. However, after speaking with the attorney, which no doubt told Mr. Roan that if he had in fact committed the murder in the manner or manners to which he had confessed that it was likely that he would rot in jail, Roney Roan changed his story. And yes, he did tell the investigators that he had accidentally killed Rose while driving. Let's evaluate that statement with a few questions of logic. If Rose Pisum indeed died due to one blow by Roney Roan while he was driving his car, why was there no car accident? For surely, if a driver is distracted long enough to strike even a small child and cause death, the driver would lose control of the automobile and surely have an accident. The Jerusalem Post printed a comment that there were, and I quote, no signs of violence, end quote. Please look at that statement from the forensics team again. Is it logical that a four-year young child could die even under the circumstances Roni Roan's attorneys say are true? Surely, if a child dies after being struck by an adult, there will be signs of violence. The Israeli forensics team's spokesperson said that there were no broken bones and continued to say that perhaps that was because the body had been in the water so long. Will someone who loved Rose Pisum please stand up and make an official request for the original Hebrew language autopsy report? Will someone who loved Rose Pisum please stand up and demand that all of her remains be returned to France? Will someone who loved Rose Pisum stand up and please demand that a forensic team in France perform another autopsy? Rony Rome stated that after he caused Rose's death that he did in fact put her body into a suitcase and dropped it into the Yarkon River, supposedly a suitcase which Rose was carrying on the day she was murdered. Will someone who loved Rose Pisum please stand up and ask where and when that suitcase was purchased? Will someone who loved Rose Pisum Please stand up and ask for the dimensions of that suitcase. Will someone who loved Rose Pisum please stand up and ask for a description of the condition of Rose's skin 
when the autopsy was performed. All of these questions are begging to be answered. Why? Largely because, appearing alongside the article quoting the forensic spokesperson, the Jerusalem Post printed a second article from a second interview. That interview was with Professor Emmanuel Gross of the Haifa University. In that article, Professor Gross quotes Penal Code 300A1. If a person is convicted of willfully causing the death of his father, mother, grandmother, or grandfather by an unlawful act or omission, he is guilty of murder and is liable to life imprisonment and only that pe penalty. How old is this tiny nation-state? When was that part of the penal code ratified? Unfortunately, and much to our unspeakable shame, we do have fathers and mothers in Israel who have murdered their own children. This is not a new phenomenon. Just some months ago, a Jewish woman in Beitar Elite was arrested with other adults from her household for causing the death of one of her two tortured young sons. Both children were under the age of six. Why did Professor Gross wait until the murder of Rose Pisum was announced to say that he believed that the law should be changed so that a person convicted of murder within a family could never be pardoned? Was it because the world did not know of the murders in Be uh, the murder in Beitar Elite? I reiterate my statement to the Israeli Knesset. Shame. Shame on each and every one of you, from Tzipi Livni on down. You have long avoided writing laws and ratifying into our penal code proper punishment for a man who murders the mother of his children. You have long avoided writing laws and ratifying into our penal code proper punishment for a woman who murders the father of her children. And you surely have long avoided writing laws and ratifying into our penal code proper punishment for any family member who murders a child to whom they are related. Just as it is your collective duty to write laws which will guarantee the severe punishment of any Arab terrorist convicted of shedding Jewish blood, so too is it your duty to write laws which will guarantee the severe and quick punishment of any Jewish parent or adult family member who sheds the blood of their own children within this nation's sacred borders. And that concludes this edition of More Than Commentary. I am Aviva Lee, reporting live in Jerusalem from Moon 552 for Israel 24-6 TV. Thank you and Shalom. May the Almighty help this present inhabited world.